I've always been skeptical about people saying that they use a word clock and it really affects the sound in a great way. And this is one of the first times I've actually had the time to sit down and do it. And I'm shocked. One of the best things about traveling around the world is I get to use a lot of different equipment. So whenever I get to try something new, it's fantastic. It's a good, it's a good opportunity. Especially on a CL5. I've been using CL5s pretty much for most of the orchestra shows I've done in the last two years. And I really love it because it sounds great and it's very quick to set up. And when you travel and use different systems, it's great to be able to bring a show file that you know is consistent from show to show. So there's a couple of consoles I use, but the CL5 is just fast and very easy to use and sounds great. For Lord of the Rings, also for the Danny Elfman, Tim Burton project that I do, and also for Final Fantasy, which are the three, three of the biggest orchestra projects that I use. I've always been skeptical about people saying that they use a word clock and it really affects the sound in a great way. And this is one of the first times I've actually had the time to sit down and do it. And I'm shocked by, the, it, it's subtle, but it really tightens up every spectrum, every part of the audio spectrum. The lows are really punchy, the mids are much more defined, and it seems to add a lot of air, which of course when you're mixing orchestras is really important. You know, when you, I think when you're mixing rock bands, you tend to roll off a lot of the highs just because everything is so close mic'd. But in orchestras, you just want that beautiful air on the top of the mix. What's a shame is that we're not able to switch between the internal word clock and, and, uh, and the other device to uh, in the middle of a, a soundtrack or the middle of a performance just to get the AB, but just listening to music. You know, just, just doing playback yeah. has been fantastic. It's been a, a kind of quite a revelation. It's about... 70 channels or so, just, just for ease of mixing because there's a lot happening in the show. I like using microphones on most of the instruments, but I try and keep the channel count down. Like for instance, I'll wire quite a lot of microphones together so that then the players are balancing themselves as opposed to me going through on individual microphones and trying to rebalance the orchestra. Because it's really the players and of course the conductor's job to balance the orchestra, not mine. It's a struggle getting clarity when you have so many microphones on stage and you're in a venue like this which has a very live acoustic and the low mids especially build up very quickly. You know, I think when you put a speaker in a box and you put a box in a room, you just get this build up of low mid. So anything that helps you get great definition and punch is, is definitely a tool that's useful to have. Obviously, the better of job I do, the better it is for the audience. Um, and anything that just gives clarity, especially, as I say, in venues that are very reverberant, where you're trying to get details in instruments that are not naturally very loud, but you're having to amplify them to, to get to the back seats. So anything that gives you definition and clarity is uh, it's a great thing, and uh, it def definitely improves the experience for the audience. Mm -hmm.